So, um, hello, uh, this is Joe Maycook um, with the PHS Cultivating Community Gardens Histories Project. And today I'm sitting here um, with John Lindsay of Wyota Street uh, Garden on location in uh, Wyota Street Garden at uh, 4020 4, uh, Palatin Avenue. 4022 is the GPS coordinate. 4022, gotcha. Google Maps lied to me horribly. Well, <laughs> that's there and that's there. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> the, the, the road is at 4022. Gotcha. Yeah, that's where we back our vehicle, back the truck in. Oh, yeah, that's. That uh, gate opens right up. That's convenient, yeah, so you have yeah, a very not nice. Not convenient, it's smart. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, there, there ain't a nickel's worth of difference between laziness and efficiency, as uh, I always said. But um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so I really want to, you know, um, get your opinions and you know the history of this garden, for you, John, and like you know, and maybe get a quick tour recorded as well of any sites you want to speak about. But I want to start by going way back and talking a little bit about your upbringing, if that's okay with you. Um, I grew up in Norwell, Massachusetts. Norwell, Massachusetts. And did you or your neighbors have gardens My there? mother had a big garden. Ah. I was forced to garden when I was a kid. So your first memories of gardening were as a chore? Yes. What, did you, what gardening did you do there? I ate everything. Digging, weeding. It works. But the planting, picking, but the... The big breakthrough was some guy in my father's office offered to buy all the wax beans I could grow at market price. So, you know, next thing I know, I was the richest kid in the neighborhood. I was making 19 cents a pound for beans, and um, allowance was 25 cents. So your chore became yeah, I, a I, business. Yeah, I, I saw the benefits. That, yeah, that's cool. I also... Um, so I have also sold pickles that I started out making as a chore. So mm -hmm. I, under, I, I understand the story a little bit. Um, but so you, your your mother taught you how to garden? Yeah, she was good. My grandfather was good. Mm -hmm. You know, you pick it up. You picked it up. But so how did you come uh, to 422 uh, Wyota Street? Well, I was walking. 420, 4022 Powell. 4022, my bad. 4022. Oh. Well, I went to Penn. That's how I got involved in West Philadelphia. And then when I graduated, I worked for a guy for seven years. Then I saved up enough money going business for myself. And I was fixing up houses over on Ludlow Street. Mm -hmm. um, and then I bought five houses here for 7500 bucks. For clarification, what did you go to Penn for? I went to the work school. I was supposed to go work for my father, but his business stunk, so I got into real estate. Got you. And so that's how you end up buying the houses. Yeah, I found for, for seventy five hundred bucks, five houses in a row. Wow. And so then, and so that brought you here, right? This area, to this block. Mm -hmm. But the, this was like a dangerous dump. Just this ground. Describe it to me. You know, trash. There was a abandoned car. It was like pot weeds, trees, everything. So you smell. You smelled weed. You I mean, saw trash. There was tons of shit on it. You know, it was a big mess. You know, a classic vacant lot. Mm -hmm. The redevelopment authority who owned it. They had those posts they used to put around. They were there. Mm -hmm. But I was having trouble. I was fixed that one up first. And I was having trouble breaking in with the neighbors. And I would already started a community garden over on 41st and Ludlow, so I used that formula. Does that community garden still exist? No, there's a house there. Mm -hmm. but the, so I got the PHS gave me some wire, a load of dirt. Well, we had to clean it up first, which was a big feat. And I had two guys working for me, tough guys. We, we, we hacked away for a couple of days and did about half of it so you had your employees was there anybody well was there anybody else involved at the well, start not at that point but then it, as we were halfway through the city came with t t trash trucks and, do and a dozen guys it took them three days to do the other half so this was still this was 1984 when the city or 83 i think 
Okay. 1984 on the sign, but I'm, it's one of those years. Yeah. So 1983, you start at the very least. Um, yeah. We, yeah. We cleaned it up, and then I started getting around people plots. Mm -hmm. you know, Mary Collins and Leo Con Leo Butler. He lived. They were good. He hated me. Now he loved me. Willie Smith gave. You know, he got one. Comp the work for the water department. He had one. So you allocated plots based on you know just. Yeah. Right. Anybody neighbors. want a plot? Plus. We've been here since then, and I have yet to have a meeting or collect a nickel of dues. Wow, that's really special for a garden <laughs> city. And we never paid any taxes or rent. <laughs> wow. Uh, and this, and let me clarify also, just for the purpose of anyone listening, that is it is it well is it correct that the housing authority. Well, the Redevelopment Authority has owned this land for the entirety of your tenure? Yes. Wow. That woman across the street at the corner house, Zola, was a whorehouse. And wow. she, she was very nice, Zola Crummer. She had assembled the ground. Uh, the, the Redevelopment Authority had assembled the ground. With, and she had a deal with them. They were going to they were gonna build a motel. And she, uh, the, she's the one I bought those five houses from. So the whole thing was pretty big. And then that her deal fell through. But I saw that when her deal, when she got got out too old to do the hotel, her brother pulled the rug on her. She sold me those. So that's how you came to those buildings in the early yeah. 80s. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but so. Um, so I gave everybody a plot, and I became Mr. Lindsay instead of. Instead of the landlord down Instead the street. Instead of that white guy down the street. Yeah. So, um... It was rough here. Really rough. The, the, elaborate. Heavy crime. Heavy. That kid Abdul lived at 51. He used to rob me every day. That's, that's when I built that fence. Before he get started, he couldn't even have sand. You know, he'd take it. So I built the fence, and one day I, I brought, after I finished it, I drive him away. I watched him climb over it like it was 18 inches high. He was like a little kid. Wow. Well, I, 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 <laughs> and I got robbed every day on that job. Wow. I mean, it was a price of doing business. Mm-hmm. The price of doing business. Yeah, it would have been a lot worse if I hadn't gotten the garden going. You feel like the garden. Helped deter. Ah, it's, a, it's a huge development tool. So you it think turn the neighborhood around? You see the benefit as not just to the space, the vacant lot that it was originally, but also to How the about whole neighborhood. Esprit de corps. Mm -hmm. People have pro look. There's, there's a picture of an '85. Oh, okay. Taken from the roof. So there's the, Willie Smith. So for the purposes of listeners, I'm going to. This, I, do you have this online anywhere? Well, you can get my son can do it for you. Okay, yeah, that would be good. But for the purposes of listeners, I'm just going to describe. Uh, so this is the same 4022 West Palatin, right? Mm -hmm. But um, here, there's so much like the most That's around. That's Wyoming Street. There's Palatin Avenue. Yeah. There's the roof. <laughs> wow. Was up on the roof. So I took the picture with Instamatic. See, that says mm -hmm. 85 on the back. Wow. May 1985, and most of the ground looks bare, but you do have a lot of you do have a lot of fencing set up. And yeah, well, that's where everybody has their own plot. Right. Plus, we right. started, we moved down. Mm. You know, I cleaned that first, and little by little, we got the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There was nobody gardening there, but I had it bare dirt. There was my old raspberry patch. There's my old strawberry mm. patch. Are those still extant? What's that? I mean, existent. My bad. No, everything's moved around. Oh, okay. Well, that's really cool. Thank you very much for sh sharing that with me. Um, and, yeah. Um, so we were a community garden for like a long time. Mm -hmm. Won the prize several times. Got those trees planted. The PHS planted those trees for us. Oh, what kind of trees are they? Those are those calorie pears. They're not supposed oh. to be any good, but we've kept them alive. <laughs> then I mowed the grass. I had a dog walking thing there. Oh. So, uh, so your garden has developed roles as also a space for trees and also a space for dogs. Yeah, that's the dog walking thing. I got that, that box that's got the 
tr the place where they dump the bags. Nice. That gray box. I used to have a bag dispenser, but it's hard to get bags. And so I want to, I guess, hone in again specifically on your your role in all of this. What roles? Well, I was running it. Has has there been anyone else who has helped? Have, have there been any people who've been particularly helpful? Ah, oh, there's been a hundred people who've been helpful mm -hmm. over the years. So we kept it going for like 10, 15 years, and then I too ma I lost too many gardeners. I'd lost critical mass. How did I didn't that have happen? enough people. I forget what year it was, but it was so. I closed it down, mm -hmm. and I had another. I have another garden. Still got it over. Baring and Saunders, and I. What I did here is I took down all the fencing, all that. Right, I got rid of all the trash, all the rocks. You know the. You know how that stuff accumulates in a community garden, mm -hmm. and then I mowed it. I bought a yard tractor and I kept the thing mowed. It became a park. So this was actually a park for yeah, several years. Yeah, the kids were playing baseball. <laughs> so this must have been in like. The 90s yeah, or early the 2000s, 90s, yeah. yeah. Maybe, um, you know, I don't know the exact dates. But so, so I. I you know, my son's 30, so he was a little kid when we were still gardening here. So that's 25 years ago. So I have a, I, a further question. I that I hope is not too intrusive. Um, so, how how is it that you came to lose so many gardeners? Um, uh, Attrition. Um, hey, old age. Mm. The guts of my crew, they were all these uh, southern guard guys that had grown up in the south that knew how to farm. There's not that many of them left in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Willie, he got he died, and Compton died, and then, you know, one by one. And I got, I had new guys come along, but I didn't have the right, didn't have the critical mass. Mm -hmm. Plus it's, I, I, I didn't have any extra time or money more than I was already spending. Mm -hmm. you know, I was starting to do too much of the work. That's why I closed it down, because it wasn't, you know, it was like I was doing all the work. I didn't have enough people helping. Mm -hmm. but I, you know, but I kept it nice. It was just perfectly functional. And then... You kept it a park, effectively. Yeah, and then as business got better, you know, 10 years ago or so, I decided to reopen it as a garden again, but with a different model. I was going to see how much food we could grow. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't see a lot of different plots with the same shit. You see, you know, 20 tomato plants instead of everybody has one. Yes. It's like a co-op. And so... So I have, I have people, I have a guy that does the, that Donald does the peppers and the herbs. That girl just walked by, does a lot of the lettuce. I got a Dahlia expert. I got people in charge with all different things. We have work days. I mean, I paid guy. I paid my guys to to, to 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 get it back going. You paid the my employees. Mm -hmm. I had two guys, tough guys, working for me. Mm -hmm. You know, we dug it up the second time around. Were they the same people who helped start? Ripping? Yeah, brother wow. C and Howard. I, I, I moved again? them into company housing down the street because they always had housing issues. Oh. I got a little two-unit building. I had Howard upstairs and C downstairs. Then C got died of cancer and Howard got shot. Oh no! In the building. Wow, that's awful. I um. sold that building to that guy Donald. He <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, so many of the gardeners who you work with now. Are not are people that you have professional relationships with in the neighborhood? Yeah, hey, I don't Donald? care if you're interested. You know, you show. If you want, you want to do something. I'll give you something to do. Right, but the focus now is on as much food production as possible, yeah, and we, on and well, also on dahlias. We, well, I give that's like I give them away. Yeah. But we donate the food to the food banks. Yeah. We've donated almost fourteen hundred pounds to the food bank so far. Oh. And the, and the, and the, we we have a we have a farm stand on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We've made like you know, so far I've given them the, the Lombard Central Presbyterian Church down in Forty Second and and Palatin. Mm -hmm. That's my big charity for the food, because they have a little they have a little food bank of their own and they have little meal programs that are going on forever. So that's who we give the the profits to. Mm -hmm. So I you know I haven't added up lately, but I, I still owe them another fifteen hundred bucks or something. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't currently sell things? I do. There's, okay. the, there's the price. Yes. But I give the money to the, the Presbyterians. Ah, uh, I see. That's cool. They gave me a plaque <laughs> at the award ceremony. Wow. We mow their grass, too. Mm -hmm. You and your employees? Or yeah, you well, I, only got, I have my son working for me part-time. Mm -hmm. This other guy, an odd day or so, an odd day or so here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I think that this brings a good segue into the next topic I wanted to ask you about, which is to walk walk me through a year in Wyota Street um, as, it, as it is right now as a community garden. And so what kind of traditions, I think you've mentioned work days, um, you know, uh, and, you know, the donations, but I wanted to ask you what traditions characterize your work and, and, the, and recreation in the space as well. Oh, we've had two weddings here. Wow. We used to have a giant Memorial Day party. We were a band and porta potty. Is it early in the, t when oh, it was look, a park? When the pandemic or... killed it. Oh, I see, I see. It was getting big. Wow. We have all kinds of events here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw something about that's the, what's that's why this big grass what this grassy area is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beneath the yeah, the, but the, the grass that's a peach tree and that's an oh, apple tree. Nice. But yeah. The, see the see what that that work those the grass strips between the between the plots. Mm -hmm. That's how you can you can like concentrate on what you're growing there. You know, with the tomatoes, we load it up with nitrogen. You know, this, and plus it isolates the weeds. To have... I have a curse of this bindweed up in pot number one. Mm -hmm. But it, that's, all, that's the only place it is. He is the I don't grass. let it go, I don't let it go across the path. Mm -hmm. So the grass kind of prevents any competition. Yeah, let, you know. Yeah, it's we like We make a, it bigger every once in a while. It, you know, we expanded a couple this year. We used to have a grape arbor there. We turned that, made that longer. Yeah. That's lovely. Want, want to walk around? Yeah, it certainly it certainly seems very walkable. I will say is one benefit of this garden. Um, I was just in one recently where everything, where you know, the paths between plots were like a foot wide. Um, oh, I can see you can see the tire track. There's a lot of driving because I'm working on that shed. <laughs> and so that shed. Like, I think you were talking to me before the interview, I'm not sure you got in the recording, but that shed will be uh, housing a refrigerator, correct? Well, it's already got all the tools, but I'm going to expand it and make it big enough. I'm mm -hmm. get, get a scale set up there, refrigerator, shell. Wow. I didn't get to see the peppers either. Well, that's just plot number one. Mm -hmm. Now, see this stuff? Yeah. This is the bindweed. You can't get rid of it. I've been fighting it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on I'm getting a price for a guy to dig the dirt out. And I'm putting new dirt in. Wow. I got it all That's set up. You can see, these are my portable bean trellises. Oh. See, the beans used to be there. But they were there for like 10 years. And you couldn't... They were playing out. So I moved the tomatoes from here to there. Put the portable bean trellises here, and when I get the new dirt, I'm gonna move them back. So you're rotating a bit. Yeah, a lot. No, we have, we have big meet. We, Donald and Milton and I have the meetings. Mm -hmm. See, I got the numbers. This is number two. Mm -hmm. So these nuts. So that that's what the numbers are for on the yeah, posts. Yeah. yeah. Tell, what are you gonna do? You go over to number two and do such and such. This is our pollinator garden. It's lovely. Lovely. See milkweed. that milkweed. Yep. Bees. Now, see this. We this is, we've had several crops in here. Yeah. We had spinach first, mm -hmm. and then that we got. You know, once the spinach was done, then we planted the peppers. Wow. You have some cool varieties of peppers too. Ah, actually. too many. I when I was in charge, we used to go the big green, the big green bells, the the the, the, the purple, the the yellow bananas. And the jalapenos. And I get buckets of them all, and everybody was happy. <laughs> but now that I'm not, I've given up control, you can't even name the goddamn pepper. 
Wow. So this plot is yeah, 38 feet long. Coal crops. It was a long... I started out with like the same sort of crops in the, in the spring. I had mustard, I had arugula, I had some turnips, right? And then I removed all that and it was all cucumbers. For the summer. Yeah, tons of cucumbers. Wow. Then we pulled the cukes and we replanted again. So these are these soup, this salad turnips. Those are watermelon radishes. That's arugula we snip over and over again. That's kale. That's China Express cabbage, and that's mustard. Wow! And they're already so they're already been, so lush. Yeah, they're, they're, I'm better, well, let's see. I harvested one today. Mm-hmm. Right. So number four is now the tomato pad. Mm-hmm. And you have straw mulch as well in between. Yeah, that, plants. that I've always done that. Mm-hmm. Now I got the marigolds growing. That's supposed to be to fight off the insects. It's supposed to. Mm -hmm. It looks good. I thought. <laughs> yeah, it certainly See, does. A lot of what I do here, as we're under threat, is visual. You know, we keep it looking nice all all year. We don't fool around. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a mess. We clean it up. So you have flowers that bloom at different times well, for that. you know, I got, there's a nice girl that runs this, Callie Sauer. Mm -hmm. She's in charge. I mean, we, I, I dig in every once in a while when it gets out of control, when it escapes. Here's yeah. a big improvement I did this year. See these? Stakes? Yeah, no. Oh. TVC. For the so, so you mark the corners, right? Because so. the, 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 the weeds want to encroach right and so if you put but when you put sticks in you can't you have to pull them out and put them back when you mow the grass so now they're permanent they're temporary you know when it's all so you can just mow off all the weeds yeah, when you, you, you mow the grass then you yeah. pull a rope then you dig the edge and make it square and i got a i got a swiss guy that's good at that mm. and See. this was we had we had a lot of stuff growing here in the spring and then we had eggplants. Mm -hmm. We just pulled them up. My son's a big lettuce. He's in charge of the lettuce. Of the lettuce, yeah. But I had nice this other guy, Reed, a little enthusiastic. He's spreading the, the, the leaf mulch, but he put it like about twice as thick as it should be. <laughs> as you were talking about before the interview, yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't complain, though. It'll, you know what? By spring, it'll be all flattened down, and we'll till it in. Keeps the weeds down. Yeah. And I got the dahlias. I got a nice Belgian woman. What's her name? So many colors. These varieties. Yeah, we dig them up and put them in boxes mm -hmm. with peat moss. And so that keeps them during. Yeah, the, and then you yeah. when you break them up, put them back in. Yeah. We had, oh, there's some turnips we just planted last week. Mm. We had sunflowers, zinnias. We had another, we had a couple crops early before. We had turnips here once. Mm -hmm. So it's our third crop. And those are baby radishes, the red radishes that are coming out. Nice. And you have just kale here. Yeah. yeah, my son's in charge of that. Nice. This is one of my strawberry patches. But you see the little ones. Right? Uh, that's one or two. See, I'm yeah. trying to dig them all out. Uh, and replant them. Or? Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put like that much mushroom soil on it. Ooh. And till it in. But I want I'm, I'm fighting this. This is the violets. That's a bad weed. Yeah, they are stubborn. But we've dug, you know, we've dug it twice. Mm -hmm. Plus, I torch it. You torch weeds? Yeah, I got a backpack torch thing. I'll show it to you. Wow. Yeah, I'd love, I'd be interested in seeing that and talking about that. Um, See, here's my little corners. And this is we had tons of stuff growing here. Yeah, we had cool. a beautiful okra patch mm. before. That that's had more of that Chinese cabbage, China right. Express. That's my other strawberry, strawberry patch. patch. It's a little weedy, but I <laughs> next time next time Reed asks me for something to do, I'll say weed the strawberries. Yeah. And these are more turnips? 
Oh, those are watermelon radishes. Oh, wow. So big. You don't know how big. Wow. And they're sweet. And they got red, they're red in the middle. I mean, you can have that for lunch. Pink <laughs> breakfast. Yeah. We, you know, that's tot soy. That's purple bok choy. That's more kale. Chard. That's, that's the third, third, third batch of chard. Wow. They carrots along here, but it's too shady. You can't throw anything here for now. Yeah. Even this rose in his shade. But see, this is the the, the neighborhood mulch. So you have bits see of eggshells. Yeah, all the eggshells. Yeah, egg yeah. Wow, lots of calcium. Now, the weeds are bad in here with that, you know, because we we don't restrict weed mulch. You know, weed and the weeds and the mulch. That's where I use that torch. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. And this is the herb operation. That guy Donald's in charge of this. That crater is where he dug up the horseradish. Yeah, that that sounds about <laughs> right. And this is more horseradish, right? I think so. Yeah. What's that Should bug? That plant. Look good. Uh, it looks like Japanese beetles. Oh no, they're not Japanese uh, beetles. Some kind of some kind of something or other. Yeah. I know, I, I, they could be harlequin beetles. Oh. They're a horrible pest. The only way to get rid of them is to squeeze them, just like I did. Wow. They used to kill us on, on college. So, in, in college, you were doing a lot of gardening as well. No, not in college. Oh, okay. As soon as I, I the first place I had I, that had I had any space, I had a couple tomato plants. So. Mm -hmm. And so you have chives, you have uh, you name it. You have rosemary, yeah, thyme, uh, mint, cilantro, lavender, yeah. cilantro, parsley. parsley. Yeah, wow. Oh, you have signs. I see also. Well, so. well some some kid, some <laughs> charter school made them back in the day. Hmm. This, is, this is some kind of annual perennial arugula. Oh. It's like a huge insect draw, you know, pollinator draw. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are the, this is lettuce, you know, very, you know, we scissor cut it. Mm -hmm. But these cages are to keep the, the sparrows away. So that's why you have the cages back yeah, on the other brown birds. Eat the, we eat the shit, eat the shit out of it. Yeah. And that is my rhubarb patch. I see, yeah. Which I'm giving up on. I'm moving it to the end of number one. Mm -hmm. Not enough drainage there, not quite enough sun. What are you planning to put there, if anything? I'm thinking of going with asparagus. Mm. But I gotta, you got to get a, at least a foot deep of soil. Yeah. But, you know, if, if a, worse comes to worse, I'll just go with cabbage or collards or something like that. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot of success with the... Um, of the cabbage family plants here. On the fall, every, if you don't have success then, you never will. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And this is the leaf mulch operation. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this is last year's, and while we're still digging that out, we'll be filling this one up. Wow. You have to have two in a mulch. Mm -hmm. And that's the table scrap mulch. Mm -hmm. And we just, we're gonna let this one brought down mm -hmm. and while well, everybody throws their stuff in this one so you use straw a lot yeah I mean, you know i can't have to buy to have, yeah to browns for the green we have voles living here oh look i'll show you the path i see yeah <laughs> too. i don't think they're rats they're grayer well they don't have that sinister look That's cool. And this, you know, this is the, the farm stand, the roof on the farm stand we built. <laughs> we did that because that's a, the mother of all mulberry trees. Yeah. And we sit there and get bombed. <laughs> the mother of all mulberry trees is right next to your farm stand. And your farm stand was also made about 10 years ago when you were... Yeah, that's only about three, four years old. Oh, okay. But we've been, so we were sitting there fighting mulberries for years. And then once we got a little security... You know, we weren't as much under threat. Then I could afford to spend some money on a few things. Mm -hmm. But when, when we were about to be closed down, I wasn't going to spend cost money to build right. stuff like that. Right, right. I wasn't going to do that and then have to rip it down. Yeah. I mean, it's clear to me that, like, with all the different colors of everything, like the rainbow chard with the purple tot soy. The... I always like, I like Ford Hook Giant. The green chard grows better, but everybody 
lobbied for this, so I gave in. I didn't care. Yeah. I mean, Ford would probably be beautiful, too, I guess. <laughs> this would be. It tastes the same. <laughs> it tastes the same. And it grows bigger and faster. It grows. And, and the bugs don't like it as much. Other than that, why? I didn't know that. No. At least, seen... at least here. Mm -hmm. But here, the bright lights, it looks. I mean, the rainbow oh, color. Oh, that's pretty. I, nice. I went yeah. for it. Yeah, it looks I nice. I didn't argue. I yeah. stopped arguing. Now, see, this shed, I built over on Sloan Street mm -hmm. and rolled over here in the early 80s. See, it's on wheels. I pulled it over. Amazing. I pulled it over with my truck. So, I got so, a picture of that. So it's on wheels and now just propped up on cinder blocks. Yeah, and but, then but I'm making it six yeah. feet bigger and then I'm going to electrify it. Mm -hmm. So that you can get the fridge in. Anything else that you're planning to have in here? Mm, I'm going to build shelves, get a nice scale. Mm -hmm. Right now, yeah. So, yeah, a scale. Hey, look, today I took down all the boards. Yeah. Oh, all the boards for... The back of the shed. I'm going to use them on the front so it all matches. Wow. Look, I look all this. <laughs> I found all the... It's all found lumber. Yeah. All wow. the, it's all ready to go. It's really nice that found you don't have to, blind? You know, use that much. I yeah. had this. I had some tenants that lived here that were big gardeners, but they moved out, so I, I grew potatoes in here. Okay. They were good. But, you know, there's, like, there's the, the, I got the fence all ready to go. I changed the post. Mm -hmm. I just rebuilt that fence. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I own, right in front of that red truck, I own the, that, the middle lot of those three lots. Where that other shed is, that's full of stuff. That's where I keep my tractors and lawnmowers. So the, like, hardcore equipment for this garden is supported, well, is kept over there. Yeah. Across the street. Wow. Well, I keep. I got one of those little mandas. We moved all the equipment out of here because it's because it's wide open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twenty years ago, that would be empty by now. Mm -hmm. Empty. You couldn't grow watermelons any back then. It was like growing a five-dollar bill. <laughs> no Just good. Just trying to force it out of that lot. Well, oh, we had beautiful watermelons here this year. Watermelons and watermelon radishes. Yeah, those watermelons. <laughs> What's the name of them? They're really good. I'll think of it in a minute. Mm. We got a lot of stuff from that Barsham Gardens City Harvest this year. My son hooked, hooked us up. So that's how you got a lot of your current plants? Oh, yeah, I guess, you know. And interestingly enough, a lot of the types that I had found that I liked, this guy, he's smart that runs that. He had come across this, he came up with the same stuff. You know, I came with the long stem marigolds, that's what he had, mm -hmm. right? I had, I can't remember the name of the watermelons, but that's the kind he had, the same kind I took after 20, 20 years, it's the kind I found works the best. Now he's good. So decisions about varieties are largely based on your experience, but also as I, we I talked about. Input, you know, this yeah. guy's good. My son's, my son's really into it. Yeah, because you know, he doesn't like being to told what to do, so I, I, you know, I'm better off with him than without him. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I use him, you know. Yeah, as we talk. I, I let him, I, you know, what the, what's the difference? Right. Got plenty of room. Yeah, plenty of room for everybody to contribute. And obviously that has happened with the example of the chart. But um, we just had a big work day with the LeBeau School of Business from Drexel. Oh. Yeah, they had six guys, or you know, three women and three guys. They pu we pulled, we had a, the, the climbing beans. We grow these Oriental long beans, these big long red beans. You get millions of them. And but the, the worst thing is like taking the vines off the trellis. I mean, look at a lot of goddamn trellis, right? Yeah. So they did. I, we had them do that. So they. And then I have a one of those weed wrenches, you know, that pulls up the plants. I had another, I had some girl t pull up all the eggplants. We had like a 300 pound truckload of eggplant plants. And we pulled up, we had a couple, against my judgment, we had a bunch of heirloom tomatoes in, on the ends of the bean plants. You know, we got a few. <laughs> you know, where, you, where you have a supersonic, you get like buckets and buckets. That's my brand, Supersonics. So the heirloom tomatoes were there for yeah, like... Yeah, my son was into it. He liked them. They were good. Okay. But, you know, yeah, we have room. 
So, um, so do you have a standing arrangement with LeBeau or with any no, other they called, institutions? No, they contacted us. And so that was just for like a community service day? Yeah, or? whatever. I don't know what their motive was, but they had a ball. That's good. Thursday afternoon. They, first time they were going to come, then, I, you know, we were busy. We blew them off. And then they called us back up, and Milt says, you can't blow them off twice. I said, all right. Now we'll, we'll wait till the beans need to be cleaned up. That's so, when you need help. So decisions about work days like that. Yeah, it's like are, there's, there's certain times when there's tons of shit to do. Right, and so that's uh, that's something. That's weird. when you have the work days. Right, and you decide on the times for that in college. Well, it's usually eleven to one on Saturday, but this we just went with what, when they wanted to come because mm -hmm. we're pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. And, and by we, we run the real estate that we get, we own. By we, you mean you? My son, son, I run it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to, I guess, ask also. You mentioned threats to the community garden over the years, and how important it is to keep it looking nice. Um, well, they wanted to build several attempts have been made to build houses. Right. So talk talk me through those. Well, you know, the first guy we had, I, I was in the hospital. We had a big community meeting, but I always smelled trouble because when I first got here, this land was worthless, and now it's worth a million bucks, if, if not more. So. That's why that sign says since 1984. I thought that might deter somebody. So then we heard there was going to be a neighborhood meeting about it, and I was in the hospital, and my wife and the, all the and a whole lot, lot of people showed up, and the, and the guy gave up. When was this? Oh, who knows? Ten years ago, some eight years okay. ago. So then, a few years after that, another developer was backed heavily by Janie Blackwell. My son was in Australia, and he somehow got an email from somebody downtown, some woman we, we knew down at City Hall, that said there's going to be a hearing at the Redevelopment Authority in three days, right, about the garden. So in three days, we got 75 people there. Was this, 20, was this the 2016-2017? Yeah, I guess so. You know, we got a lot of records of it. We got a video of it. So, you know, we had a big crowd, right? And, they, and the, you know, this, this developer was stunned. I got all the RCOs all for it. You know, they, so I, I said my speech, I said, look, in three days, I got 75 people here. If I'd had two weeks, I would have got 175. And if I had three weeks, I would have had my own RCO. It's like, you know? And then everybody got up and spoke. But I think the big thing that happened, there was another developer that came. And Janie was setting it up with this friend of hers for $600,000. This guy says, I pay a million. How does how's he get it for six hundred? dollars So that, I think the, redevelopment, the guys on the redevelopment board sort of think, you know, guess what? We don't need to get involved in this. So they voted for us. And then they tried to... The Neighborhood Garden Trust is like Jenny Greenberg, you know, they're all over it, but they, it's too valuable. They can't, they're not going to give it away for in perpetuity. <laughs> they're not, you know, I don't, I don't want it. It's, it's, you know, it's too good an asset to give to somebody. So by all over it, you mean that the Neighborhood Garden Trust wanted to... Well, they, back in the day when the land was, wasn't worth that much, they would like make a deal with the city and it had to be, it would be a garden. You know, they get the deed, they pay help with the insurance, they've, they've converted a lot of gardens. But we just were a little behind the eight ball here because of the value of the ground. Right. Because of the, because the developer appraised it at a million dollars. <laughs> well, he, you know, he said, he just said, he testified. He said, I don't know how this guy's going to get that thing for 600000 I'd have paid a million. Where, where's the bidding? I, to me, that was like, no, no one... Everybody thinks it was just, just hooting and hollering, but it was, to me, that was like the, one of the key bits of testimony. Mm -hmm. Hey, door. So, they can't, we don't own it, and we're not, you know, it's sort of at an impasse. But I don't, and, but this Jamie Gautier, our new council person, she's been here numerous times. And so you think that you know, she's, she's not going to, like, get some 
sell it out from under us. So it's not official, but we're in pretty good shape. Like enough shape that I spent a lot of money. In the past three or four years. Yeah, look, see that yeah. fence? Yeah. See how it has that board along the bottom? Yeah. That's so you when you weed whack, it doesn't... Oh. It's easy instead of like hitting the wire and breaking your string. Yeah. And... Wow. <laughs> so these are... So these are all also like innovations that you kind of come across. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm sure was, a lot of people have done it, but I didn't see it. I figured it out. How about uh, this one in the most pile? Wonderboard, Dura Rock, the Kyle backing board doesn't rot. Yeah. You know, after I was there for a long time, I just changed a couple of the, the, the pieces of cement board. When we dug it out, I put did a little work on it. So a lot of your garden, a lot of it seems to me like a lot of your gardening like innovations have also stemmed to some extent from your knowledge of materials. Yeah, I, from, I renovated all these houses with used stuff. You saw what I'm going to build that shed with. I found it all in the trash. Mm -hmm. Pulled all the nails out. It's all lined up by size. It's very cool. Yeah. Plus, I bought a whole load of plywood because I own a couple storefronts on Lancaster Avenue. I was worried during the riots I was going to have to board the place up, so I got a lot of sitting on enough plywood. Mm -hmm. I got it all set up. You I board the place up? You mean this garden? No, the windows of my house. Oh. It's like a big glass storefront, mm -hmm. and they came within a block of there. Right. Smashing the 40th in Lancaster, like they broke into all the stores there I do remember I do remember hearing about that yeah, I, well I'm, I saw that it's like I'm right down the street I'm 38 mm -hmm. yeah um, but the the only new wood in that building are those doors Wow I mean I only put them in a couple of years ago because we used to like walk around to get in and I said wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> Close those doors up and make new doors. So since 1984, that's all that you've had to add in terms of wood. Yeah. Yeah, that's or the only. That, well, yeah, I fixed it a few times, but that's the only <laughs> new wood I've ever used. Everything else I found. That's thrifty. I bought the I bought the I bought the tin on the roof, but I had some shit I found in the trash from the first time I built it. And then I broke down and bought some <laughs> corrugated tin. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I I mean it's understandable I guess. You, there's a point at which you just need to buy new yeah, things. Yeah, come on. If you got yeah. the, you got the assets. Yeah, and it's she and it's faster sometimes too ah, the direct shit, recycle. Okay. Yeah, you know, I look around, if I found something, I had see the roof on that shed? Mhm. Mm That's all found. Wow. I found a pile of that roofing, that weird metal roofing. Mhm. Mm on the, you know, in a in a dumpster. There it is. Mhm. Mm Okay, um, so I, I guess my my next question is, um, how how has the garden changed since you first came here? But I want to also say I want to put that in the context of I guess how would you say the garden and its impact on the neighborhood has changed since you first came here? Because I think we've talked through you know how well, this it's, space it's has been a impactful the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's just different now. Then it was like a unifying the, the neighbors in a war zone in the 1980s the yes 1990s. it was like rough out here now it's like it's a scene we have, you should see the parade of people come through here one weekend we one Sunday we sold $556 worth of vegetables wow the pandemic was really good for the farm stand mm -hmm. there was nothing else imagine. for people to do yeah I mean, last year, everything, we, we doubled in sale. And this is only really run by like eight people or so, or less? Nah, you know, if you add it all, you know, yeah, and doing the work is not counting the, the farm stands, but real solid players is about eight. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, sure. Excuse me? Yeah, pause. Oh, okay. One time I was walking down to the 7-Eleven and some bedraggled guy came up to me and says, ah, oh, will you give me a dollar? It's my birthday. 
I said, if you can prove it's your birthday, I'll give you five dollars. So he got all shaky, he pulled out this little shitty idea, it was his birthday. <laughs> I gave him a five, he danced down the avenue. Wow. <laughs> I wish I'd said a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that would have been nice. Yeah, um, well. Well, um, back to talking about the garden, though. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I wanted to, I guess, ask, do you have any favorite stories about the garden? Um, you've given a lot of interesting stories so far, but was there anything particular that didn't, you know, make the list that, you know, you haven't been able to bring up yet that mm. you want to talk through? I don't know. There have been so many. The wedding was good. When was that? That kid Donald got married here under the grape barber in the rain. I was, I was the minister. They had me ordained for a day. That was pretty good. It, was there another wedding too? Yeah, I mean, some other person, some other people from the neighborhood asked if they could use it, and I said sure. That was a big day when I rolled in that shed. Mm -hmm. And that was in the in the 80s, where like yeah. all the old black guys were hanging around. I said, "Wait," I said, "You guys ready for some action?" I said, wait about an hour. <laughs> and I rolled down my own, I got a picture of it. I rolled down my own tree, full of my shed. They helped me push it in. <laughs> oh, that was generous. <laughs> and they did get some action. Yeah, they were like, oh wow, look at this. This Lindsay doesn't fool around. <laughs> you do not. Um, okay. Um, I guess now we've talked through a couple, you know, anecdotes. We've gone through your garden. Um, we've talked through all like its history from 1983 to now. Um, I wanted to ask, what are your future plans for it? Um, wh where do you see it, you know, five, ten years from now? Well, hopefully, I'm still around. I'm trying to develop the next generation. I mean, Donald and Milton are, are, are strong, but they, you know, they, they don't really know. Like, Milton's good at a lot of stuff, but he's no weeder. <laughs> I'm like a weedaholic. <laughs> it would, which, would you Yeah, I pull weeds. Yeah. I, I, I fight them constantly. I get off on it. I enjoy it. So you attribute that to growing up? No, I just, you know, I, whatever it was, my personality was like neatness. Who knows? It's like, mm -hmm. I fight weeds. I'm about to spend a couple grand to get rid of those weeds in the front corner. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, because I also assume that your son grew up weeding here, too. Yeah, right? he's never much of a weeder. Oh, but I mean that he worked in the garden, right? Yeah, well, I didn't force him as much as I was forced. Well, did he make money selling wax no, beans? No, I mean, he he's, believe me, he is really into it, but he's not into, like, he thinks he knows about the maintenance, but they but they don't really. But they're good. They'll, they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. See, what I would do if I ran that neighborhood garden trust, I've told Jenny several times, give me a five-year lease. Right? And... With an, you know, every five years you get a new lease, and if it, and then have some way to establish the, the maintenance standards, right? And if it looks good in five years, you get another five years. If you come down over, they come over and it's a shithole. Party's over. You know, if you can't make it's, it takes a lot of resources and effort to keep it looking nice. That's a big piece of ground to landscape. It is a big garden. But Milt's good at with Milt's good with the with the, with the lawn mowing. He's good at the weed whacker, two cycle engines, rotor tilling. Still Donald's you know Donald's really busy. He's got a wife and a kid and a job. Plus, I don't know how much longer Milt's going to be around. But again, you know what? If it craps out, it craps out. I just want to keep it going as long as I'm around. And I hope to pass the torch. If they can keep it going, good luck for them. Mm -hmm. It's all here. 
all here. They just have to work on it, and it just has yeah, to. Yeah, well, you know, if it, I, I'm going to leave it to them. If they can do it, they can have it. Mm -hmm. If they can't, then they'll lose it. And as, and as long as the redevelopment authority stands with them, then... Yeah, but if it's a mess, they won't. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. We run a winter garden contest. Oh? We... we we had 30 some contestants we drive Milton and I drive around and grade all these people's gardens in the winter when they look like you know what right ours looks beautiful I think I think I read about that thousand dollar first prize wow four two hundred fifty dollar prizes is it confined to just West Philadelphia no it's all over the city you wouldn't believe wow. driving around on that trip the but PHS the pretends they're backing us but they they're, I think they're a little pissed off. It's not their idea. <laughs> but what's his name? What Raider? Not Raider. Yeah, he announced it at the last, at the last party, you know, for the winners. But I wasn't there. I said, Milt, did you sign? We were in the back signing everybody up. Oh uh, no. I said, well, gee, I think that was the whole point. But that's in thirties enough. Wow. It's but really it's bizarre driving around, though. You see places you never. The dream and go places you know I drive melts on a GPS you know going from somewhere in the northeast to somewhere else like it's unbelievable I didn't stop for lunch well that lunch was a little restricted last year mm -hmm. what do you think then about do you what do you see then as the future of gardens I guess kind of like this in Philadelphia yeah, you know the, I, I, I only drive around in the winter and most of them are a mess. The ones that look good, I give them, I give them a cash prize. <laughs> Milt wants to go around in the summer and see what they look like. I say that's probably a good idea. Everybody's garden looks good in the summer. Mm -hmm. Then it would be harder, but in some ways I guess. Well, they already have a summer garden contest. Well, they're sort of folded with the COVID. Yeah. Not us. Ours got bigger. <laughs> We got some nice guy down there that's, that's backing us better. We had to, well, we had, what's her name? The, the nice girl that's doing it. I'll think of her name in a minute. But now we have a new guy that's better. But, but. so, so the um, the Winter Gardens contest, well, yeah, but I, I guess what I was meaning to ask was, do you, I mean, I know your story with this garden is just one out of, hundreds of community gardens in the city um but do you have any thought but like yeah do you have any thoughts about the future of community gardens in the city more generally based on this experience and based on your well the problem is is real estate's gotten too expensive there used to be a bunch of community gardens in new york you don't see that anymore i mean after if it was worth like 10 million dollars would they let me garden here you know it's like there's a point where it's like you can't resist anymore. Hell, it could be a big collapse. It could be worthless again. It's a pretty good location. The L's right there. Presbyterian Hospital's right there. I mean, I didn't buy it here. I didn't move into this neighborhood because it was out in the weeds. Figured it was and now you're cleaning out the weeds every every day. Yeah. Well, it's a little weedy right now, but this time of year you get you get a little green light. You know, I just torched that the other right after it rains. That's when you get the torch out. Backpack. Because then it's harder to burn. Well, it's harder okay. to start a fire. I've only yeah, started harder, two. Harder I've start only started fire. two fires since I got the torch. Nice. <laughs> I, I set that fence on fire and I ignited a planter over behind my house. And when did you first get that torch? Four or five years ago. Okay, it's, it's really good. I have another the annex, the Wyota Street Garden annex. You haven't even seen. That's over thirty nine at, at Baring and Saunders. So that's still existing. <laughs> that thing is. We make tons of food there. Wow. I'll have to. I have. That's what's got. It's sixty feet long. It's like thirty by sixty. So we have like sixty foot rows of stuff. That's where I have my corn patch. We grow tons of corn. I gotta go look at it. Uh, well, not right now. It's like right we now. got an eggplant. <laughs> we got tons of stuff. Yeah. Oh, there's me and my tomato patch. Wow. Two point nice. seven pounds. Cripes. Those are some big. Tomatoes. Big Zach. 
So those are supersonic. Well, that's or, Big Zach. I grew okay, them over the other side, over the other place. I start, started them in my, mm -hmm. I started them in my, uh, my basement. Mm -hmm. I got a really good picture of my cornfield. It's a nice aerial view. Wow. From off on the roof. Yeah. See, nice straight so the, the difference, I can see the difference between then, the picture you showed me in the 1980s when it was just being made and a lot of bare ground, and now you have these huge tomatoes that you can see from the roof. Oh, here we are planting in the annex. Nice. We're planting like, looks like lettuce or something. So those are those, those long 60 foot rows. Yeah. Those, wow, impressive. I got a good one of the cornfield, but I don't know where it is. I'm, I'm, I, I won't bother. I won't bother you with it. Um, no, it's worth. It's worth it. Oh, okay. look! There's a pretty good one. That's me in Halloween, dressed up in my scarecrow. <laughs> I have this John Lindsay look like a scarecrow. I just took him down to, to renovate him. Wow. For for this Halloween? Last Halloween. I'm not doing much this year. You're not doing it this year. Oh. Mm. There's there's the farm stand, lads. Gorgeous. Love the. Um, hey. Tomatoes. Oh, I guess I missed it. That's okay. Well, no, I... I'm, 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 <laughs> what do I got to lose? Ah! Wow. There it is. It's corn as tall, almost as tall as you. Where's well, it's just like a silver choice. It's short. Mm. But beautiful ears. You know why it's short? It's a pain in the ass to get rid of the stalks. So it's bred so that it's easier to well, get rid of them. Silver Queen is like nine feet tall, and the stalks are like trees. That, that took like two truckloads to the recycling place. Wow. In you, Fairmount. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. All right. What time? Yeah. Is yeah. It? Thank you so much for your hey, thanks time. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, and I'm gonna turn off the recorder.